Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Come on in because it's going to rain. Welcome to the Burns Memorial Church of God in Christ. It's just a glorious morning. Amen. We've just elected a new presiding bishop, Bishop Drew Shear. Amen. Amen. God bless the man of God. New changes in there. Changes in there. All right. Well, we're going to go ahead and go into our Sunday morning Bible study. Would you pray with me? Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you and we praise you and we magnify your name. Lift you up, Lord, for you are doing wondrous things that we can't even understand or comprehend, Lord. But Lord, we praise you for it. And Lord, right now, we ask that you open up the listeners' ears and hearts to receive what you are speaking. I decrease, you increase in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. amen. I want to thank God for Jesus who laid the foundation. Thank God for Jesus who opened up the way. Thank God for Jesus who leadeth me each day. Thank God, thank God, thank God. Come on and thank God for Jesus. Who laid the foundation. Thank God for Jesus. Who opened up the way. Thank God for Jesus. Who leadeth me each day. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Amen. We have been talking about the race. Amen. And I want to move it into the other aspect. Remember. On Thursday, we were teaching on running, wind running, and how strategically as you're running your race, if you use the wind to help guide you and lead you and, and take you forward and catapult you, you know, forward. And, and that's how we walk in destiny, by allowing the wind, which is the Holy Spirit of God. So today I want to go in deeper into the wind. All right, so I want to read some scriptures in your hearing. Acts, the, 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 the force behind every storm. Any storm that you have, wind is the force behind it. And remember Thursday, we talked about these storms were necessary. Jesus said these things need be, okay? These storms, instead of running from the storm, we ought to let the wind navigate us through the storms. Because the storms were ordained by God to get us to our destiny. Okay? So we were talking and, and, and trying to get you to understand how, you know, most people are running away from the very thing or the very event that will take them on the other side. Remember that Jesus told the disciples, let's go to the other side. And the place was called the Capitalist. It was, and once they got there, it was a great revival. A, a demon-possessed man with legions in him was delivered. And that deliverance brought about a great revival in that area, a great move of God. Well, that's us. You know, we're running from the very things that needs be, okay? It needs to be, but we're running from it. And we need to stop that. We need to kind of... You know, be bold about what's coming to us or what we're coming to. Because we don't realize the storms don't come to us. I want you to get that. We come to the storms. Because yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. David was walking through the valley and the shadow of death was coming to him. I mean, what, he was coming to the shadow of death. He was passing by it. Okay? So that's us. We come to our storms. They don't come to us. So when you see a storm coming, know that it is a destiny move. You ne never in the Bible did God uh, allow the disciples to avoid the storms. It's just when they got to the storms, he commanded the storms. You understand? The storms are, are, are assisted by the wind to brew up and it pushes the boat. It takes us. We learn what we need to learn. We, we, we get, we go through the process to get to our destiny. Okay. So now I want to go. So I want you to keep that the wind in Acts 2 and 2. 
was it was like a rushing mighty wind. The Holy Spirit came in. It was it was it was akin to the wind, just like the wind. Characteristics of the wind. You can hear wind, but you can't see wind. Do you understand? You don't. And then I want to go to John three and eight real quick. John three and eight. This is Jesus talking. Okay, Jesus talking, and he says, "The wind bloweth where it listeth." And thou heareth the sound thereof, but cannot tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. So Jesus is letting you know, if you are a true child of God, okay? I want you to catch this. The moves that you make are unpredictable like the wind. The moves, the flow that you have is undiscernible. It can be heard. Point in case, remember when the Israelites were going to Jericho to take the promised land. The, get, the, the, the town, was sh the city was shut up, it says. They were locked down because they heard the Israelites coming. They heard the destruction that the Israelites did on its path to Jericho. They were already scared. Their exploits had went ahead of them. And I, 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 you know, that excites me because when I was coming to New York to fight this, this, this destiny fight, all right, that soon, soon as I got here, the enemy started to scramble. When I walked up in that church, they started to prophesy against me. They started to cut up. They were scared of my presence because they already knew that God was coming with me. Do you understand? They already knew the Holy Spirit had already come ahead and let them know. We got to worry about Jeffrey. <laughs> he, he's the one we got to worry about. The one they thought, you know, would, 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 couldn't get there. The one they thought was out for the cow. They had to worry about it because the Holy Spirit was leading that fight. So that's why I'm trying to tell y'all. Y'all got to understand when you walk with the presence of God, when you walk with the wind of God, come on, somebody. The enemy gets scared of you. The enemy, everything in the universe know you coming because it's a man and a woman walking in destiny with the Spirit of God. Flowing. You understand? The wind is invisible. The wind is unpredictable. The wind is free from man's control. Nobody can control the wind. We harness the power of the wind with windmills and all kind of things, but we can't control it. Is why we, we have sometimes great destruction. You understand? Because if we could control it, we would stop it from, you know, destruction. The wind, one of, one, of, one of the storms that the wind kicks up is a tornado. What does a tornado do? A tornado comes in, it clears everything in its path, uproot trees, houses, cars, everything in its path. It gathers it. And when the tornado subsides, it drops everything it picked up where it wants. See the flow of the Holy Spirit? When the Holy Spirit comes in, it purifies, it cleans, it clears out, it uproots. Y'all remember Nicodemus? Come on. He, he was a man that was counted out. Nobody believed that he could be a child of God. And he got saved the minute he met Jesus. The minute the Holy, the Holy Spirit had came in and, and pricked his heart and he gave his life to the Lord. Do you understand what I'm saying? And, that, and a lot of those people that were born in it, that knew the word, that grew up in the word, couldn't even receive what Nicodemus received because the Holy Spirit does what he wanted to do. God does what he wanted to do. He saves who he wanted to save. He preordained and preordains, predestinates and preordains who he wants. Do you see what I'm saying? That wind comes in. Oh, I remember when I got saved. I walked up in my church, and my grandfather, Dr. Thomas Burns, you know, and my grandmother, they sat there and looked at me, and they thought I was dying. They thought I had caught some disease, and I was out for the couch because they couldn't believe that I was getting saved. Not Jeffrey, but the Holy Spirit convicted me that morning. I got up out of my bed and walked in that church and gave my life to the Lord. Now, I messed up plenty of times after. But I was saved. You understand? I was saved that day. Is why I'm saved today. 
I messed up, came back, backslid, came back. But that was the day that the Holy Spirit, that the wind came in and just said, boom, changed my life forever. I was about 20 years old at the time. All right. So now I want to go over to Ezekiel. I want you to go back to Ezekiel in the Old Testament because I, I got some stuff to teach you all this morning. And I, you know, I know I can't get it all out, so we'll probably be probably we'll be dealing with it on Thursday, okay, for Bible study. But Ezekiel thirty-seven, you know, one to fourteen, all right. But I'm not going to read one to fourteen, all right. Ezekiel thirty-seven, and in fact, all right, hold up, a little messed up here. And it's not Ezekiel 37, is it? No. I am messed up here. <laughs> okay. It's not Ezekiel 37. I want to talk about the bones. The bones. The dry bones. Okay? So I'm going to talk about it. All right? While somebody get the scripture for me. All right? But understand this. In Ezekiel, God asked Ezekiel, can these bones live. Okay? He brought him to a valley of dry bones and he said, can these bones live? And then he told Ezekiel, I want you to begin to speak to those bones. Preach to them. And as he preached, Ezekiel said, he heard a rattling. He heard, he, you know, he, he heard noise. Bone to his bone began to come together. Ankle bone connected to the this bone and that bone connected, you know, tibia, the fibulae and all of that, the cranium and the sternum and, you know, I used to know how to name all those bones. But the bones began to come together. And then when the bones came together, they had no life in them. They had no skin on them. God told Ezekiel, he says, I want you to begin to prophesy to the wind. Ezekiel 37 and 9 says, okay, that's, I did have the right scripture. I had to, I was in the book of Exodus, is why it was looking crazy to me. So read 37 and 9 for me. Also he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy son of man, and say to the breath, thus say the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain that they may live. Okay, notice what God did with Ezekiel. Okay, and this is Old Testament. So I want you to catch this. Remember, Jesus says, the wind, you know, in, in John 3 and 8, you don't even know where it goes. You, you, It's unpredictable. You understand? It's free from man's control. It's continuous in motion. It exists everywhere. It can, and wind can be experienced in various degrees. You know, tornadoes, it could be a soft wind. It could be, you know, but he told Ezekiel, Prophesy to the winds and say to the winds. And he talked about the north wind, south wind, east wind, west wind, the four winds, right? And I want you to say to it, you know, to bring skin on these bones, to bring life back to these bones. Now, I want you to understand what God was doing in the Old Testament. The wind that he told Ezekiel to prophesy to was the Holy Spirit, was Holy Spirit. He wanted Ezekiel to preach to the Holy Spirit, okay? Now, who's Holy Spirit? It's God, right? It's God's Spirit. It's God, okay? So God is telling a man, preach to me. <laughs> preach to me and tell me what to do. Now, notice, wind cannot be controlled by man. So God understood that, but he understood that there was an operation in America that needed to take place on earth. Man had dominion on earth. God gave us dominion. He never took it back. So in order to get something done, a man had to cooperate with God. The Bible said where there's two or three gathered, he's in the midst, right? Where there's two touching and agreeing, we can establish a fact. God knew that there had to be two touching, two gods touching can bring about a miracle with dry bones, all right? So man, little God, made in the image of God. God's spirit in him, breathed into him, right? So Holy Spirit, God himself, God tells Ezekiel, 
speak to me. And when I want you to speak to me, prophesy. So you're preaching what I've taught you. You're preaching the word that I put in your mouth back to me. And we are going to come into agreement and these bones are going to live again. Do you see? This is what we should be doing. But let me tell you about that, that, that what, what God was saying, speak to the wind. When you look it up in the Greek, wind and spirit, the same Greek name, pneuma. Same Greek word, pneuma. Okay? What God was saying, that's where we get the word pneumatic, where, where it's an air power drill, pneumatic. When you got like an air power drill, it's pushing air out like a tornado, like a great, you know, mighty wind, a pneumatic, right? Then, then you get the word pneumonia, which is a disease of the lung. That's the breathing, the, the lungs, you know, taking the air. So God was like, speak to the very essence of even you, the breath I breathed into you. When you speak to the Holy Spirit, you're speaking to you, you're speaking to the universe, you're speaking to everything, because remember, God created the earth with the Holy Spirit. Now, understand this. In the beginning, the Bible said God spoke. That great cataclysmic explosion that man said took place was God speaking the word of God, which was Jesus Christ pre-incarnated. God spoke and created with the word of God, but what took the word of God to the proper destination, the Bible said the spirit of God hovered over the face of the deep. It hovered. So the spirit of God just was hovering, waiting for the word to be spoken so it can take it to the proper location for manifestation. Do you get that? So God spoke the word, Jesus. The Holy Spirit took the word and made this, created this, separated the waters from the waters. I saw a picture my daughter sent me the other day of two waters meeting out there in the in the ocean. They're meeting and you and they two different waters and they don't cross over into each other. It's like something is stopping the waters from me from mixing. And that's God. That's the Holy Spirit setting boundaries. Oh, y'all need to get this, boy. Because if you get the Holy Spirit and go, get in cooperation, cooperation is the key. With the Holy Spirit, nothing shall be impossible. Nothing can stop you. I'm all the way up. Nothing can stop me. I, I say that all the time. I know that you know that's a secular song or rap or whatever. But I'm all the way up with the Holy Spirit. I'm filled with the Spirit. Nothing can stop me. From the destiny that God has ordained for my life, for his expectation. Oh, people of God, get this. Pneuma, pneumonia, the breathing, lungs. You know, we get that. That word, God says, speak to the pneuma. Speak to it. Speak to the Holy Spirit. And you tell the Holy Spirit to bring life back into these bones. You tell the Holy Spirit to put skin back on it. You tell the Holy Spirit to complete the job. So they can become a mighty army again. Do you, do you, do you see where I'm, where I'm going with this? Speak to it. You, can, you, you don't know the direction of the wind. Right? And God has that on purpose. Because God is sovereign. God does what, you know, what, he's everywhere all the time. Omnipresent. And he's sovereign. Does what he wants to do. You understand what I'm saying? But when we get in cooperation with what he wants to do. All right, we will speak what he wants to do, and then he does it because we have dominion on this earth. Speak. I, I, I was telling somebody this morning that we ought to stop speaking so much in this dispensation to Jesus and speaking to God the Father in that lingo because there's only one God and begin to specifically speak to the Holy Spirit. Because this Holy Spirit, remember Jesus left and he says, I'm going, but the Holy Spirit is coming. And he's going to teach you of me and tell you things that I've, I've spoken and preached and remind you of things. But he's the one that has this dispensation, that the Spirit of God has this dispensation right now. Okay? In the form of the Holy Spirit. 
So then we ought to respect it and literally speak to the Spirit. Speak to the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. I need you to go here. Holy Spirit, I need you to manifest it. Holy Spirit, I need you to do this. You know, God will give you your destiny and you speak it and get in cooperation with the Holy Spirit. Uh, somebody get this word, boy, because you get it and run with it. You're going to see results. I've been getting results. My wife, she loses some keys and she started asking the Holy Spirit, tell her where the keys are. And she finds the keys. And you're like, man, the Holy Spirit don't care about no keys. The Holy Spirit is the very breath that we breathe as children of God when we fill with the Spirit. So it cares about everything we care about. And it will deal with even the littlest situation like finding some keys. Keys to the kingdom. If you want the keys to the kingdom, Holy Spirit is the key. Do you understand? To the keys. Whatever you want, a healing. We are, Lord Jesus, please heal. That is not a proper prayer. We are healed by his stripes. Holy Spirit reminds you that we are already healed. So speak, you're healed. You understand? Holy Spirit, get all up in that. They're healed. Speak to the Spirit. You're broke. Speak to the Spirit. The Spirit will get to the root core of why you're broke. There's a reason why you're broke because as children of God, we should not be broke. So then if we're broke, we're out of alignment with the leading of the wind, with the leading of the Holy Spirit. So then we get in alignment, people, and we allow the Spirit to direct us to the problem. Could be, I, I, I got Amazon coming to the house too much. Could be that I, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm running up credit cards. Could be, I won't say, you know, so Holy Spirit will tell you what the problem is. And if you listen, then it will all get worked out. Because Jesus said, I come that you have my, might have life and have it more abundantly. Holy Spirit will remind you of the abundant life that God has ordained for you. Do you see why we got to be led by the wind? Why we got to follow the wind? Why we got to flow with the wind? Come on, somebody. You put your words in the wind and the words will carry and the, and the wind will carry it to its destination. But if you don't put the words out there, if you don't speak what God tells you to speak, you keep your mouth shut. The wind is blowing all the time, waiting for you to speak and command its direction. Command where it should go. If it's your marriage and there's a problem with the, 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 the husband or the wife in the marriage, you turn around and you speak in that direction. I Get Bible verses that tell you about the prosperity of marriage, that tell you about what God has ordained for marriage, and you speak it. I told you the story about a young lady who told me her husband, he's just into gangster rap, and he all he, all he want to do is sell drugs and do this and do that, and she's trying to live safe in the house. And I told her, start speaking into that man's ear when he sleep. He can hear, his subconscious will pick it up, and you start saying, you mighty man of valor. Oh, you mighty man of valor. You speak. You know that man trying to preach now? All these years later, that man is trying to preach now. I'll tell you. Winds are sent to accomplish what's spoken. The Holy Spirit is sent to accomplish what is spoken. It came to establish what Jesus had already preached and spoken. So then we get an agreement, people of God, all right? It's God's word from your mouth, do you hear me? To God's ears that bring the agreement to touching. Right, I mean, I'm getting ready to close now. To touching, coming together, agreeing, establishing things. We have dominion, people of God. We need to agree with the things of God. We need to agree with the word of God. I hope I've given you some word to, to really ride on. Ride on, King Jesus. No man cannot hinder me. Ride on, King Jesus. No man cannot hinder me. Ride on, King Jesus. No man cannot hinder me. When I get to that city so bright and fair, no man can I hinder me. I go on with that song, one of my old songs, you know, they come up in my spirit. 
Amen. I'm not that old. But the old songs, you know, they, they, they still bubbling in my spirit. Amen. So come on, people of God. Let's get this right this week. Let's begin to speak to the Holy Spirit. There are things that God has put in your destiny. I told my wife this morning some crazy stuff that God spoke to me. And it's crazy. It, it, it's like, wow. You can't, I, I, my flesh will never believe that, that that could happen. But you know what I decided to do? I'm going to get in agreement with it. I'm going to get into speaking. No matter what the obstacles are that keep me from accomplishing that. I had my own brother tell me something that could hold me back from that destiny. Right? That, that, that has transpired in my life. And I had to rebuke that. I had to turn around and say, uh, -uh that ain't going to stop me. All that you come up with, man can't stop me because I'm in agreement with the Holy Spirit and speaking the right things. If you do not know the Lord in the pardon of your sin, the Bible said the word is nigh thee, even in your mouth, that if you confess Jesus, believe in your heart that he is, that he died for your sins, rose again for your justification, you are saved. Receive your salvation right now. And as soon as you receive it, receive the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Receive the power. Ask the Lord. Lord, fill me with your spirit so that I can flow into my destiny like I'm supposed to flow. Thank God for all my givers. Amen. Some gave even before the service even started. Before the Bible study, I thank God for you. Some gave while we were, uh, you know, speaking. And I thank God for you. And some are going to give after. Y'all see y'all how y'all can zell us. And now, and, and still, you can cash app us. And if you need other ways, we got a peel box that you can mail your donations to us. Well, I'll give you that. DM me. We also have PayPal if you need that. DM me. If the Lord is touching you, you're sowing into good ground. I know it. But I'm praying that the Holy Spirit will let you know it. And you will sow and the Bible said, give and it shall be given. If you are trying to prosper financially, you got to find good ground to sow in so you can reap a harvest. Amen. So God bless y'all and we'll see you again tomorrow, Marriage Monday at 7 p.m. Amen.